Evangelists, deacons, missionary, brothers, sisters, children, so all in God's house. Amen. Thank the Lord for being here tonight. Truly thank the Lord for being such a good God, a mighty God. Thank the Lord for those blessed and powerful testimonies. Amen. The praises that go up in Jesus' name. Amen. And truly, I just thank the Lord because, again, just let you know we're in the true faith. Don't, don't give up on God. Trust in Him. Believe in Him. Amen. He's going to make a way. a great God. Amen. Yeah. And he will take care of his own. He's going to provide for him. Amen. Amen. And he sees the work that our labor is not in vain. We just keep on holding on. Keep on um, and we keep receiving what God has for us. Yes. Praise yes. the Lord. And I love that story. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes. People always why don't you get that? Maybe that's for you. Praise mm -hmm. the Lord. But I thank Amen. the Lord. Yes. Amen. We're going to keep on going until we get what God has for us. Man, truly, again, just thanking the Lord for being in God's house. Thank the Lord for being a part of the true church. Amen. And just thanking the Lord. You know, the prophet said years, I mean, many, many years ago, he had, he had visions. Yeah. Amen. That the God had for him, for his people. Amen. And not just, amen, for his people, but for all in Spartanburg now. Praise the Lord. Amen. God had something for them. If they would have a mind to come and follow the prophet amen. and be up under him, praise the Lord, and come in. Amen. I thank the Lord for those that have been baptized. Amen. In Jesus' name, that will come in. Amen. We were once there, but I thank the Lord. He saw fit. He called us in, and he's calling. He's still calling. Praise the Lord. And I thank the Lord for those that are answering. Hallelujah. That's a blessing. Amen. When you hear God's voice, and we answer him. Praise the Lord. But I want to go right into our lesson our, um, lesson on this evening. Praise the Lord. I'm going to take my text from Philippians chapter 2. Praise the Lord. In verse 5, it reads, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And again, I like that text because, you know, we have to always have our mind on Jesus. Right. Amen. We have to always, you know, years ago they came out with these bracelets, what would Jesus do? So whatever situation you think you're in, you know, you're supposed to think about what would Jesus do. But a lot of people were wearing those bracelets and they weren't doing what Jesus would do, praise right. the Lord. So, you know, it's more than just a notion, a t-shirt, or a saying. It's got to be in your mind. Yeah. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Oh, Amen. Yeah. And I want to go over to our subtext, Philippians 1 and 27. And, and when you have a mind of Jesus, and you're, you know, have on the one accord with Jesus and with the word of God and with his true prophet, it says only let your conversation or your manner of life is going to be as it becomes worthy of the gospel of Christ. Amen. That whether I come and see you or else be absent, whether the prophet sees you or whether Amen. the people before the church see you, it says, I may hear of your affairs that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. So no matter where you are, whether you're at home, amen, whether you're at work, whether you're in a grocery store, you're going to have a mind that is like Christ Jesus. And not only will you have that mind, but then it will show in your lifestyle, in your manner of conversation, which means your lifestyle, in your day, everyday living. Amen. It's going to be like Christ Jesus. Amen. I want to turn to our... Um, I want to turn to Luke chapter 2, and praise the Lord. Uh -huh. And reading from verse 42 through 52. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they saw him among their kinsfolk, kinsfolks and acquaintances. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. 
And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wish ye not that I must be about my father's business? And they understood not the same which he spake unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. And I brought that scripture out of that text, those texts out to show us Amen. That if we have a mind in Jesus, we're going to be about our Father's business. Amen. Amen. And no matter what, you know, yes. he was 12 years old and he was at that time subject, supposedly subject to his mother and father. And, you know, she was worrying about, where are you? I'm looking for you. Where are you at? But I'm about my Father's business. Amen. Amen. And I like in verse. 52 it says and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and we know he was God Almighty but that's an example for us that if we're about our father's business we're going to increase in wisdom and in stature and also in favor with God and men praise the Lord and I thank the Lord that's what our prophet is doing he's increasing in wisdom I thank the Lord for his teachings that come across amen and let's know because he's about the business of Jesus he's increasing and wisdom and God has found favor with him that his vision, everything that he's uh, praying about is coming to pass. He can lay hands on us and we get healed and through the belief, amen, and just trusting and believing in God, healings and miracles are coming to pass in true life, praise the Lord. It's not a, um, a play thing here. God is truly blessing, praise the Lord. And I want to turn over to Jeremiah added reading text to tie this in. Praise the Lord. And we're familiar with the story in verse 35. Chapter 35, praise the Lord, Jeremiah. But I want to start reading in verse 1. It says, The word which came unto Jeremiah from the Lord in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, saying, Go unto the house of the Rechabites and speak unto them, and bring them into the house of the Lord, into one of the chambers, and give them wine to drink. Then I took Jazaniah, the son of Jeremiah, the son of Habazaniah, and his brethren, and all his sons, and the whole house of the Rechabites. In the spirit, he brought them all in. And I brought them into the house of the Lord, into the chamber of the sons of Hanan, the son of Idaliah, a man of God, which was by the chamber of the princes, which was above the chamber of Messiah, the son of Shalom, the keeper of the door. And I set before the sons of the house of the Rechabites pots full of wine and cups, and I said unto them, Drink ye wine. But they said, We will drink no wine, for Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, commanded us, saying, Ye shall drink no wine, neither ye nor your sons forever. Neither shall you build house, nor sow seed, nor plant vineyard, nor have any. But all your days ye shall dwell in tents, that ye may live many days in the land where ye be strangers. Thus have we obeyed the voice of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, and all that he have charged us to drink no wine all our days, we, our wives, our sons, nor our daughters. Yeah. Amen. And I want to drop Amen. over to verse 18. And Jeremiah said unto the house of the Rechabites, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Because ye have obeyed the commandment of Jonadab your father, and kept all his precepts, and done according to all that he hath commanded you, therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Jonadab the son of Rechab, should not want a man to stand before me forever. Amen. Amen. So they were blessed, amen, because they obeyed their father. And I like the testimony in this story, or this in this. These scriptures, praise the Lord, is more than just a story. Praise the Lord. But I love the testimony that, yeah. amen, it ties in with Galatians 1, 6, and 9. Though anybody preach any other gospel unto you, amen, they, they'd be accursed. But, amen, mm -hmm. in this story, yeah. tying it in, is that even though it was the prophet that brought them into the house of the Lord as a test, let me see if you're going to be mm -hmm. obedient to all your father's precepts. Let me see if you're going to obey everything the bishop or the prophet tells you to do, praise the Lord. And they said, we will drink no wine. And also I brought that out because, praise the Lord, you have pastors, these, I won't even call them pastors, these false men, these false preachers, hypocrites in the pulpit telling people, oh, it's okay, God forgive you, you know, he understands your um, weakness, praise the Lord. There's an, there are even pastors who, you know, drink wine and are 